Hi, I'm Ross from Kerm Smith Property Accountants in Hamilton. One of my um, least favourite topics at the moment is the property investor you don't want to be. So just as always, we have a disclaimer at the start. So this is general information and it's not specific advice for you. Um, yeah, if you need specific advice, you need to speak to a professional um, and not rely solely on this. So the standard property cycle is um, yeah, it's basically what generally happens, the market goes flat, it booms, it goes flat again, um, it booms over time. So yeah, what we're going to talk about is what happens in the standard cycle and what happened between 2007 and 2009. It's no guarantee that it'll happen again. So the first thing that generally happens is people get talking. They talk to their neighbour, they bought a property, it's jumped up in value 200,000. They're amazing people, they, they're really um, astute investors and they're doing so well and you want to buy an investment property to keep up with them. So you say, oh my neighbour's buying a property so maybe I should as well. So then you start to get excited and you go shopping and you want to buy a property. So you jump into the rental market and you, you buy your first rental property. You don't really have a plan at all and you often have poor knowledge. You often don't understand a lot about property, how it all works and what can happen with it. It's generally, at the moment, it's probably the top of the market. No one knows exactly until later on, but it seems like the market's peaked a little bit and that we're the top of the market or even just past the peak. Most properties at the moment are poor cash flow. They're losing cash, they're losing five or 10,000 a year. So most property investors are hoping that the market's gonna go up and up. Um, this is off the Hamilton uh, market mainly, and the red line is the Hamilton median sales graph. Um, so over time, it goes flat, it goes up, and your yeah, investors are really hoping that's gonna go higher and higher. Uh, a possible reality in my pick of the market would be that it's going to go flat, um, that it could be five or seven years of the market going flat, so there might be little or no capital gains in the near future, that's outside of Auckland. Um, Auckland's a different market, but yeah, in Hamilton Bay or plenty of other markets I see it going flat for quite a while. So then what happens, this investor, they've just bought their new property at the top of the market, there's no growth in the first year. They're losing cash, they're putting in five or 10,000 um, in that year just to keep it even or to top up the mortgage. And they start to become a little bit disillusioned. Then year two comes and we get no growth again. Cash loss again, the investors having to put in more and more cash. And they're starting to get really disillusioned. This property investment game is not working for them. And maybe there's a few tenant issues. The rent might not get paid or the tenants might trash the place slightly. So they're starting to get a couple of issues come up. Then it comes up to year three. We've got no growth again. Starting to get arguments between mum and dad. Um, there might be an issue that finally tips them over the edge. Yeah, maybe, um, yeah, there could be a meth issue or even just some damage to the property. It's not been treated like their own and they've had enough, they sell it in a rush. So what we're looking at in that sort of standard investor behavior is we've had a loss of cash over three years. It could easily be 15 to 30,000 of cool hard cash lost over those, those three years. We've also had a loss of sale um, on the property. There's likely to be less buyers in the flat market, therefore it could easily be a $50,000 reduction. Um, so these poor investors have yeah, lost cash for three years, they've lost on the sale of the property, and there'd also be some commission and legal fees to come out of that. And so basically the investor vows, I'm never ever going to buy a rental again, I'm never going to get in the rental market, and rentals are just not for me. Um, so that's sort of a, a standard investor behaviour at the moment and that to me is really the investor you don't want to be. You don't want to be someone jumping in at the moment without good knowledge and good information. You don't want to be jumping in and getting something with poor cash flow. Um, and these are sort of examples of what's out there at the moment. Um, these are all April 17 um, and they're purposely a few months old so that you can't go out and buy them and that they're not on the market. So. 
Yeah, this is an example one. It's price guide of 500,000. It's a new townhouse. It's got a rental appraisal, um, low maintenance, easy care near the university. So it's a new property with, um, that should give relatively low repairs, which is a big plus. The first five or so years should have low repairs. Um, it also should have high depreciation, high chattels depreciation, which either gives you a bigger tax refund or reduces your tax bill. One of the big things is it was a rental appraisal. Um, be very careful when buying a property of a rental appraisal and make sure you get an independent rental appraisal. Um, if it's been sold to one real estate agent, I would go to a different rental company to make sure it's completely independent and never rely on what um, developers say about properties, never rely on a developer's rental appraisal. Make sure you get your own. Based on 50 weeks, it's returning a 4.35% gross yield. So straight away, we know that gross yield's not even gonna cover the interest, so it's gonna be a negative cash flow property. It's not, that rent is not gonna cover the rates, the insurance, or the other costs. So there will be a large tax loss, sorry, a large loss after the tax refund for about $6,000. What happens if labour gets in and they take away tax refunds? We're just coming up to the 2017 election um, and it doesn't seem that labour will get in at all, but that's a possibility. And even if labour doesn't get in, in the future what happens if the government takes away those tax refunds? Our loss basically balloons up from 6,000 to 11,000. So that's a large amount of extra loss. What happens if interest rates go up? You can borrow at 4.25% at the moment, um, if they go up to 6.5%, that's an extra 11,000, sorry, it's 11,000 loss after the tax refund. So again, it's more cash coming out of your pocket. So you need to think how that rental work. So overall to me, you're just gambling on capital gain. Um, and it's how much you wanna gamble on it and do you wanna gamble at all? Over 10 years, my estimates are it's gonna cost you 110,000 and that's after you get your tax refunds back. Um, my estimate of capital gains, and it's a big guess, is that it'll go up and value 164,000. Off that, um, those costs, 40,000 is tax refunds. So if tax refunds disappeared, the real cost would be 150,000, and comparing that to my estimate of value, there'd only be a gain of about 14,000, so would it be worth the risk? Second example, it's in Frankton, which is a lesser area in Hamilton. It's an older three bedroom with a bathroom and garage. It's only 339,000 and it's a Housing New Zealand rental. So old house is gonna mean more repairs. I'm personally not a fan of Housing New Zealand, so I would keep away from that unless there was a real upside to it. There's gonna be low depreciation because it's an older property. Based on 50 weeks, it's 4.83% gross yield. So still not high enough to cover all the expenses, it's still gonna be a negative property. Um, it'll be a large loss of about $5,000 after getting taxed back again. So about $100 a week. What happens if Labor takes away the tax again? Same thing as before, the loss goes up and now it's a 7,000 loss. What happens if interest rates go up? At uh, 6.5%, the loss goes up to about 9,000. Um, so more risk and again, more things you need to think about with that property. Overall, once again, we're gambling on capital gain. Do you wanna make a, take a gamble on an older property in Frankton jumping up in value? Um, over 10 years, my estimate is it's gonna cost you 75,000 after getting the tax refunds back. The tax refunds are worth about 27,000. Um, so basically it's going to cost you over 100000 over those 10 years and I'm estimating it will go up in value 111. dollars um, it's, it's just not worth taking that gamble um, and that just doesn't make sense in my eyes. Last example, Hamilton East property, there's two homes on one title which starts to get me more interested. Generally more homes mean more income and it can be a better yield. Um, they're asking 669,000 and combined rent 670. It's an old house, there's more repairs, low depreciation because you've got older chattels, 
there might be an opportunity to renovate and increase rent. So that's a big thing that you could look for. Can you add more bedrooms or can you just do it up a little bit and get more rent? For two houses, 670 a week doesn't seem a lot. Um, so I think there's probably a big opportunity to review those rents and put them up over time. Based on 50 weeks, it's a 5% gross yield. So it's slightly better than those others, but once again, that's going to pay the interest basically. It's still not going to pay the rates and insurance, so it's going to be negative cash flow. So it's a loss of 4,000 a year. If we take away the tax refunds, they're not such a big deal um, because there's not so much depreciation, there's not such a loss, but it would still increase that loss by a couple of thousand. If interest rates go up, then the loss balloons up to 11,500, and that's because the mortgage would be a lot more, so there's a lot more exposure to interest rates. Overall, we're still gambling on capital gain um, for that property, and the main thing I would be looking at, is there a twist? And a twist to me is an opportunity to do something different. So yeah, can you just renovate the property to make it do better? Um, can you add a minor dwelling? Can you subdivide? Is there something you can do with the property um, that could improve the rent and improve the value? So that would be the main thing I'd be looking at that. Is there another opportunity? Um, so over 10 years, it's going to cost you 80,000 um, after you get your tax refunds back. My estimate is going to go up in 220,000 over those 10 years. Um, and tax refunds are worth about 30,000. So to me, there's actually a big enough gap there that your costs are a lot lower than um, the estimated capital gain, so it could be worth investing in. Um, the main thing I would be looking at is, yeah, what are those improvements? Can you increase the rent? Is there something that you can do with the property? And that would be, depending on what those answers are, would be whether I would look at buying that property or not. So key things to look for, cash flow deficit, um, watch out for that, watch out for large repairs, watch out for lemons, which I'll cover in a second, watch out for tenant hassles. So a lemon to me is somewhere of low population, um, low growth, um, cash flow negative, and repair or large repairs or tenant hassles. To me, that's just a property that you don't want. Why would you want it if it's got all those negative things? You want something positive about it, or if it is very low population, low growth, high repairs and tenant hassles, you want a huge cash flow. Um, so you don't want something that's all negative. And really the main question if you're looking at buying a rental is does this property actually help you reach your goals? So many property investors are looking for passive income for retirement, yet most rentals are at a cash flow loss. Um, so just be careful, make sure the property works for you. Overall, yeah, hopefully it'll make you pause a little bit before you buy, just take your time. Um, and yeah, make sure you're not that investor who buys a property right at the peak of the market, three years time sells it right in the sort of blip in the market, and some other investor picks up a real bargain, whereas you're left losing thousands of thousands of dollars. So yeah, really main thing from this hopefully is just take your time, pause a little bit, um, and don't rush into something in property. Um, we've got some great information on our website and if you join up to our newsletter you get some great tips and tricks in property. About every one or two weeks I write a blog that will hopefully help you. Um, and also if you've got a current accountant and just looking for some better accounting advice we've got a great offer or review offer on your financial statements. So yeah, check out our website and hopefully that's helped you a lot. Um, also if, yeah, if you just want to have a chat for five or ten minutes um, to see if we can help with your situation. We do a free chat for five or 10 minutes over the phone. So just email my PA Maurice and we can organize that. So thank you very much.